Hi, today I'm going to talk about how to create notifications for your washer and your dryer and home assistant. Now, if you're in the U.S., the washer is pretty straightforward and easy, but if you've got an electric dryer, things get a little bit more difficult. Stick around, and I'll show you how I did it. Hi, welcome to Resin Chem Tech. Today I'm going to talk about one of my earliest and still one of my wife's favorite automations, and that is washer notifications. Whenever the washer finishes its cycle, the following announcement is made via seven different Google speakers spread throughout the house. The washer has completed its cycle. And of course, once I had washer notifications, her next request was dryer notifications. That's a little bit trickier if you own a standard electric dryer here in the U.S. I'll talk about how I tackle the dryer notifications in a little bit. But let's start with washer notifications. Now the washer notifications is really quite easy and you can probably do the whole project in no more than a couple of hours. Really the only thing you need is you need a smart plug that has energy monitoring. Now there are a couple of different things to note if, if you're looking at, at different smart plugs. Obviously they come in different shapes and sizes, but for one thing you need a smart plug that can either be integrated integrated into your home automation system. In this case, I'm going to be talking about Home Assistant. So it either needs to have a notification or a, uh, sorry, an integration for the particular plug that you're buying, or you need the ability to flash custom firmware. Now, part of the problem with some of these smart plugs, uh, for one thing, many of the manufacturers have moved away from the ESP8266 chip. So they're no longer, uh, it's no longer possible to flash these, or it can be very difficult uh, to do that. In addition, most of these are glued together. No easy way to access them. And by trying to pry them apart, often you'll break them or you won't be able to get them back together. So my smart plug of choice is called the Sonoff S31. Um, not only does this have the energy monitoring that we need, but it's extremely easy to flash custom firmware onto this smart plug. We'll take a look at uh, the basics of how you do that next. Oh, and one other thing I should mention, you need to carefully check uh, your smart plug to make sure it can handle the amps uh, that is going to be pulled by your, by your washer. So for example, this particular smart plug only has a, a maximum amps of six amps. So you need to carefully check and make sure that you're not going to exceed the amps um, of the plug itself. Now the Sonoff S31 that I, sp that I spoke about has a uh, maximum amp rating of 15 amps. That happens to be the same size as the breaker that my washer is connected to. So I feel very confident uh, in using this 15 amp uh, Sonoff S31. One of the nice things about the Sonoff S31, I'll get this up here, uh, maybe try to get it focused so you can see the, there we go. Again, you can see it's rated for 15 amps. Um, but the nice thing about Sonoff is there's no glue here. It's like they basically made it so that you can take it apart and flash custom firmware. The only thing you need to do, and this is really the only part, is, is gently snap off this end cover. And you just want to be a little bit careful not to break the tabs on that. Once that's apart, these two little top uh, pieces slide out. Slide those off. And you can see that there's simply just three screws. Uh, one here, one here, and one here that we need to take out. So let's take these out. One thing I will say, uh, first time you take one of these apart, these screws are always in here really, really tight. Um, every every Sonoff S31 that I've used, uh, uh, those screws are, are driven in there pretty tight. So you just be a little careful not to strip the heads. But once you have the screws out, this piece simply lifts out. And if you look right here on the edge, you'll notice, can get it to focus here. There we go. Okay, you can see basically we have our 3.3 volts at the top. TX, RX, and at the very bottom ground. Those are the four pins that we're going to use. Um, you can actually do this without soldering. If you do solder, be very, very careful. It's very easy to, to rip these, these pads off. Uh, and at that point, you'll no longer be able to, to connect this or uh, flash custom firmware. But all we're going to do is we're going to take some of these little uh, grabby clips and we're simply going to attach one to our 3.3 volts in and we'll connect RX and TX. 
Uh, the only thing you want to do is make sure you've got good contact with the pads and make sure that obviously nothing is uh, nothing's touching anything else. So at this point, we now have our 3.3, our ground, and our RX and our TX. So all we have to do at this point is we take the other ends of these and we simply connect it to our uh, USB to TTL adapter. Um, and I'll leave links for the, all the parts that I use down in, in the video description. But then we're going to plug this into the PC and then we're going to flash Tasmodo. I'm not going to show that step. If you're really interested, uh, Travis over at DigiBlur does a really good job of walking through this whole process of flashing Tasmodo or Tasmoda um, onto the Sonoff S31. He's actually doing uh, washer notifications as well. So I'll leave a link to that. Um, but I'm going to skip the part of flashing uh, Tasmoda onto this. So once we have Tasmoda flashed on, onto our S31, we simply reverse the disassembly process um, to put everything back together. And there we go. Now all we have to do is go plug this into the outlet uh, where our washer's plugged in and then plug the washer into this. If you're using the Tasmoda integration in Home Assistant or you've turned on auto discovery via the set option with Tasmoda, this plug will automatically be discovered with all of the necessary uh, sensors and switches defined for you in Home Assistant. So let's take a look at Home Assistant next. So when we take a look here in Home Assistant, we'll see that a number of sensors were automatically defined for us. Now, your names may be different, or if you're using a different integration, um, you may have some, some different sensors here. What we're primarily interested in for our automation are these sensor watts. We're going to keep an eye on that, and that's what is going to tell us when the washer starts and when the washer ends. The washer state here is something that I've defined, and I'll talk about that when, I, when we take an actual look at the automations. But the rest of these values are all brought in automatically via the Tasmoda integration. So here we are in, in Lovelace, and again, we can see uh, our washer status, and here's our watts, amps, and I, I also just display voltage here, but we're really going to take an eye, keep an eye on these watts. Right now, the washer status is idle. Um, I'll talk about this, but that is a state that I define actually via MQTT, but you can also use the uh, text input helpers for this value. Um, but right now, both the washer and dryer are idle. We'll talk about the dryer in a little bit. We're going to watch this watts in our automation, and when these watts change, we're going to change the washer status. Okay, now you can see the washer, has, the watts have went up, which means the washer has started. So at this point, we've now changed the status of this from idle to washing. Now, throughout the cycle, um, these watts are going to go up and down through the spin cycles. Uh, the one thing that you might want to be aware of is depending on your particular washer, it may have a soak cycle and your watts may drop down below a particular threshold. We'll address that in the automation to make sure, in this case, I'm using five watts as my threshold. So when it drops below, I want to make sure it stays below five watts for a couple of minutes to let me know the washer is truly done. So we'll keep an eye on this. We'll let it run. And again, our watts are going to, to especially peak up high when it starts to spin cycle. Um, but we'll come back when it's near the end of the, of the cycle and see what happens there. So I'm going to jump back in here for just a second as this thing is still in the middle of its cycle. But obviously now it's up to a, a spinning cycle. And one thing you may want to do is uh, run your washer through a cycle while you're watching uh, both the watts and the amps. So you kind of know how your washer acts, especially when it goes into a, a soak cycle. But you really want to keep an eye here at what your peak amps are. Again, that goes back to the fact of making sure you're not exceeding the rating on your smart plug. So again, we'll wait for this to get closer to the finish and we'll come back. Okay, there we go. Now we've noticed that the, that the watts have dropped back, back below our, our 5 watt threshold, but notice that it still says washing. Part of the reason why is there is a slight delay in the automation. We want to make sure that the washer is truly done so that it goes below 5 watts and it stays there for a period of at least one minute. 
Again, that's, that's added in there in the case of if the washer goes into a soak cycle and actually drops below temporarily, below our threshold. Again, this is something you'll kind of have to check out with your own washer, kind of track it through a, a normal cycle and kind of see what, what your min maxes are and where you want to set that threshold. But here in approximately uh, a few more seconds, we'll see this status washer change um, from washing to idle. Um, and then we should hear the voice announcement. The washer has completed its cycle. And there we go. So our time has elapsed. Our washer status is now back to idle and you heard the voice notification. So we'll take a real, real, real quick look at the automation itself before we move on to dryer notifications. So now let's take a look at the automation that makes all this work. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know I'm a YAML guy. Um, and when I created this automation, the ability to create automations through the UI was not available. But now you could easily create this uh, same automation using the UI um, and following the same steps. Really, there are three pretty simple automations here. The first one is the, when the washer starts. Again, we're going to monitor our sensor for watts. When it rises above 5 watts, we now know the washer is running. We're going to check to make sure the washer wasn't already running, and that's our condition here. The reason for that is if for some reason our watts were to temporarily drop below 5, again, maybe it's in a, a, a soak cycle, we want to make sure that the washer isn't already in a washing state. If not, we're going to publish an MQTT topic um, to the washer state with a payload of washing. Again, now with, with the UI and the helper tools, you could easily use a text input for this. In my case, I used M MQTT. So that's all there is to the first step. When the washer goes above 5 watts, it's going to set a uh, MQTT topic to the state of washing. For the next one, it's going to wash your state idle. Again, the same thing, we're going to watch those, the washer watts. When it drops below 5 for at least one minute, we're going to publish again to that MQTT topic now saying the washer is the status of idle. And that's what you saw displayed in the Lovelace uh, UI when it said washing and idle. So finally, when the washer is finished, in that case, we're going to watch that state. When it goes from washing to idle, we know that the washer has, has completed its cycle. So again, I'm checking to make sure that I have my notifications turned on, and then I'm simply going to use Google Say to deliver to all of my Google devices the message the washer has completed its cycle. It's really that simple, and it's even easier if you want to use the uh, UI to create your automations. But again, in a matter of a couple of hours, you can easily set up washer notifications in your house. If you don't want to use Google, you could have a push notification to your phone, you could have a, a light turn on, uh, any other ways that you want to be notified when the washer cycle is complete. So that does it for the washer side. Now we're going to move on to the more difficult dryer side. So moving on to the dryer, this is going to be a little bit more difficult than the washer if you have a standard electric dryer in the US. The reason why is your dryer likely runs off of 220 volts instead of 110. That means we can't use a standard smart plug. We've got to look for alternatives. Now one alternative would be to use something called a CT or current transformer clamp. We would clamp this around one of the phases of the wiring inside of the dryer and then we would connect this up to something like a ESP8266 and be able to monitor the current that the, that the dryer is pulling and we could build our automations off of that current much like we did with the washer. However, that does require tearing your washer apart. Another option would be something called a vibration sensor. By using this, you could actually keep track of the vibration of the dryer and when the vibration starts, it's running. When it stops, it's over. This wasn't going to work for me because of our washer being a front loader when it goes into its spin cycle, causes so much vibration, it would have constantly set off the dryer sensor. Another option, although I couldn't find it, I don't know if it's available anymore, was actually an accelerometer that was battery operated that attached to the inside of the drum of your dryer. And it would know when the dryer drum was spinning and when it would stop. I didn't like the idea of putting a battery operated device inside of a high temperature situation. So I didn't go for that. Another option I had was the fact that I pulled up the schematics on um, my dryer 
and I knew I had DC voltage inside of the control panel. So I figured I could tap into that DC voltage, hook it into the buzzer, and be able to monitor that way. But once again, that was going to require tearing the dryer completely apart. My wife said no to tearing the dryer apart, and I wanted to maintain a high approval factor. So here's the route that I took. So this is the front control panel of my dryer. And you'll notice that there are a series of uh, lights that light up. Any time that the dryer is started, the sensing light comes on, and any time the dryer stops, the cycle complete comes on. So I thought if there was a way that I could sense these indicator lights, I would know whenever the dryer started and whenever the dryer was complete. So what I opted to do was use a couple of photo sensors and a D1 Mini to be able to measure the change in voltage of the photoresistor and use that voltage in much the same way that I use the watts for the washer. Now obviously the technique that I used here is only going to work if you have similar indicator lights. But if you do, I'll give you a quick run through of, of how I did this. Once again, I'm going to use one of my favorite boards, the Wemos D1 Mini. Um, get this up here kind of close um, and get it to focus here in a second. There we go. We're only going to use three pins. We're going to use the 3.3 volt ground and then over here is the AO or the analog pin. So 3.3 volts ground and the analog pin. We're also going to need to use a standard uh, photoresistor. Again, this is going to cost you a couple of pennies at most um, for that. And we're going to need a 10 kilo ohm resistor. Finally, one of the hardest things to come up with was actually a case to hold this in. So I needed to have a recessed area for the photoresistor that would fit flush against the dryer and with the photoresistor right over that indicator light. And obviously the D1 Mini goes in, into here. If we take a look at the picture here, you, here you can see the finished piece of this where the, uh, again, that photoresistor is, is recessed flush against the back side of this 3D mount. Quick look at the wiring diagram. Again, we're going to connect one leg of our photoresistor to 3.3 volts, the other leg to our analog pin or AO pin on the D1 Mini, and then we're also going to connect the AO pin through our 10K resistor to ground. That's all the wiring there is for this. Um, we'll go back over here and take a look at this. This is the, zoom in a little bit here, the, uh, the finished wiring. So again, one leg to AO, the AO connected through a 10K resistor, to ground, and then 3.3 volts to the other leg of our photoresistor. That's all there is to it. And from this point, we're going to use ESP Home to flash firmware onto this for use in Home Assistant. Oh, I should have mentioned uh, when we were looking at the parts, the Wemos D1 Mini will be powered by a 5 volt micro USB cable. Um, it draws very little current, so any uh, USB adapter will do. I actually uh, bought one with two outlets to power my two different D1 Minis and plugged it into the unused outlet uh, behind the washer. And that's what powers both of those boards. But as I mentioned, we're going to use ESP Home. Um, and really, it's very simple. We just needed to find one sensor in here, which again, we're using that AO or that analog, analog pin. Um, we're going to give it a name of, of dryer indicator level in this particular case updated every 30 seconds. And for the D1 Mini, because according to the ESP Home documentation, the Wemos D1 Mini has an external voltage divider that scales down a 3.3 in volt to the one volt. So we're really gonna to need to multiply that uh, back up by 3.3 to get our, our actual voltage. So that's all there is to the uh, ESP Home piece of this. I always add a switch in here and I'll, that's completely optional. All it does is gives me the ability to remotely reboot or restart uh, the D1 Mini from within Home Assistant. So now we'll take a look at the automation, which from this point on is going to be very similar to the washer. So after we've defined our ESP Home uh, nodes, flash that to our D1 Minis and powered them up and attached them to the dryer, we'll now see that we have two different sensors. Um, I should have named these a little bit better, but dryer indicator on is that is that top sensor that lets me know that the dryer has been turned on and has started a cycle. And once again, with a photoresistor, the more light, the less resistance, and the higher the voltage. So right now, I can, I can definitely tell that that uh, top light is turned off because it's reporting a very, very low voltage due to the high resistance and no light. 
The other one, which is I should have named indicator complete or something different, but I called it dryer indicator level. That's that light um, for when the dryer cycle is completed and that light comes on. And I can tell you right now that that light is turned on at the current moment. So the, the dryer has, has completed and that light actually stays on until uh, you open the dryer door. So uh, right now the dryer has finished at this point. And in this case, it's showing a voltage of 1.1 volts. And it just dropped a little bit there. So um, that lets me know that that now indicator is on. So with those two, and down here I have a dryer state. Again, it's going to be idle uh, or drying or finished, much like we did with the washer. So once again, we're looking at YAML. But as with the washer notifications, all this could be done through the new UI and using helpers instead of MQTT. Is similar but a little bit more complex. So for the dryer start cycle, again, we're going to be watching our our photoresistor. When it rises above a voltage of 0 .07, 0 0.75, um, normally when when the indicator lights off, it's going to hover around 0 0.01, 0 0.02, depending on how much ambient light is seeping in there. But we know when it rises above 0.75, again, we're going to make sure that it's not already in a state of drying. But we're going to publish an MQTT topic for our dryer with a payload of drying. Again, you could use a, uh, a helper and use uh, text input for this instead of use, using MQTT. In this case, we're also going to start that timer I talked about. So the dryer always completes uh, its cycle within an hour. It ne never runs any longer than that, that that I've determined. So if it's still sitting in, in a state of drying after one hour, that most likely means my wife has manually stopped the dryer and pulled the clothes out. So in that case, uh, we'll get to what happens when that timer expires in a minute. Um, but if the dryer does finish on its own, once again, we're, we're looking for a voltage of above 0 .07, 0 0.75. This is for that second lower indicator. Again, we're going to make sure this, in this case, it is in a state of drying. And we're going to publish another MQTT message the state of the dryer as finished. Okay. And so again, uh, we're going to default back to a state of idle if neither indicator, indicator is on and the state is no longer drying. So we're going to check and make sure that our indicator level is below 0.75 and our other indicator is below 0.75 and we're not in a state of drying and we're just going to set the status back to idle. Here's where I talked about if that time, that one hour timer expires. All we're going to do is when that timer finishes, we're just going to set the state back to idle. And finally is the voice notifications. What we're going to watch for is we're going to watch for the state of that dryer to go from drying to finished. We're going to make sure our notifications are on. And then we're just going to simply, again, use our Google devices to send out a message that your clothes are dry. Again, you could use push notifications to your phone. You could use a light indicator. Uh, anything that you want to do in terms of the automation to indicate that the dryer is finished. So that's going to do it for this video. As I mentioned, doing washer notifications is pretty easy and pretty straightforward. But dryer notifications are going to be heavily dependent upon your particular model of dryer and you and your significant other's uh, tolerance for potentially taking the dryer apart to come up with a solution. If you're lucky enough to have indicator lights, then the solution I proposed here may work for you. Be sure, be sure to check the video description down below. I'll have links for all the parts that I used, along with links to my copies of the automations that I use for both the washer and the dryer. If you found anything in this video useful or anything that you like, please hit that like button down below. That lets both me and YouTube know that you found this video useful and you'd like to see more videos like it. Also, if you want to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button in the lower corner and be sure to click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I release a new video. As always, Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you soon.